hello friends hope your preparation is going well so this is the uh, third video in this high yield traction theory series and in this video i will start a uh, basic traction theory explanation so it is this is tts 1.3 traction theory series 1.3 if you have not not watched previous two videos which i have made on tire tire mechanism tire construction and uh, tire diameter calculation then please go back and do watch first those two videos uh, because those two concepts will be important uh, and that i will be using frequently in these videos so first watch those two videos and then come come back and then again start this video okay so let's begin this is me i did my btech from rio pusa bihar got a all india rank 13 in gate and uh, did my btech from iit kanpur now i am working in my own mind so uh, what is traction <coughs> traction is uh, one of the most important theory in uh, tractor mechanics in tractor actually basically it is important for agriculture engineering uh, for both theoretical as well as for those who are working in the tractor industry and this is one of the most uh, most misunderstood concept i would say <coughs> so i will try to explain it in simple terms so basically uh, your engine is generating some amount of torque which is being transferred up to the tire through uh, your gear mechanism or transmission system and it will basically rotating the tire and that torque will converted into force which is acting on the tire circumference now your tire will have lugs and that lug will penetrate into the soil so basically that engine torque converted into circumferential force and that will be transferred to the soil through your tire lugs <coughs> okay so this traction force is the result of interaction between your tire as well as your soil so that tire will be called uh, traction device and soil will be called uh, traction medium so traction is the result of conversion of rotary motion which is coming from the engine into useful linear motion it will help your tractor to move in the forward direction okay so the this gross traction is the result of interaction between soil and engine torque acting on the tire circumference and it will help your tractor to move in forward direction now there there might be several condition uh, as i have told you that previously people were using steel tires so the first condition could be uh, a steel tire on concrete surface <coughs> this i will tell uh, the condition of rigid tire on rigid surface okay so this is a simple uh, case of frictional body in which uh, this your uh, frictional your body will rest on on a surface there will be some amount of coefficient of friction between these two bodies and then f force is acting in this direction so the resultant maximum available traction force will be f in f equals to mu into w so this is a simple frictional theory which you have you might have read in your physics books so i will not explain much into this this is a very simple concept now this mu is coefficient of friction which can be also expressed in terms of angle of internal friction so if you google it angle of internal friction you will find that this mu is will be equal to 10 theta so theta will be angle of internal friction so f will be equal to w tan theta so w will be the normal load okay but in our actual condition our soil will be also deformable and at the same time your pneumatic tire rubber tire will also be deformable so actual condition will be <coughs> rubber tire on soil surface means deformable tire on deformable surface in that case the previous condition will still holds true this uh, mu into w or mu into tan theta will still holds true but at the same time some additional uh, things will come that i will explain so in this case this your as i have as i have explained earlier this uh, circumferential force will cause soil shear stress so this <coughs> if this is a, if some soil surface is there suppose this is a soil surface <coughs> and you have tire lugs so this tire lug will penetrate into the soil and it will try to actually shear off this soil which is accumulated here 
if this is if this is your direction of motion then this soil lug tire lug will try to try to push this soil in this direction okay so due to this pushing <coughs> stress will be generated in the soil and this stress will be directly proportional to this force circumferential force and indirectly proportional to this tire footprint area that is what i have written here this tau max is directly proportional to the f force and if you take this a here this tau max shear stress will be indirectly proportional to this area okay so the main purpose is to calculate this stress value <coughs> so this stress value will be So this stress value will be has been calculated by some scientist, mainly Janos and Hanamoto. And what they did is they did some experiments and some theoretical uh, uh, calculation. They found out that tau max will be equal to C plus P ten pi. P will, P will be your uh, soil pressure force. So pressure will be nothing but the force per unit area. The force will be normal force divided by area. So we will found out F max is equal to A C plus W ten pi. You might have seen this equation as equals to AC plus W ten pi, but most of the people will just remember this, but they will not understand how how it came. So this is how it came. <coughs> so uh, now we'll see there are two parts in this. One is this AC part. Second one is this W ten pi. Now we will see it one by one. First we'll see AC part. Okay. So this is how tire footprint is coming. <coughs> If tire will tire will run will soil. Then you will get this type of tire footprint. Okay, so here you you are uh, this this is uh, not a complete footprint. That's why you can see it. It, is, it looks like rectangular, but in actual condition it will not be rectangular. It will be something like this, elliptical. So pneumatic tire footprint will be elliptical tire, not ellipt elliptical, not uh, rectangular. <coughs> so in case of this, this is your width B. This is your length L. In this case, this will be your length L. This will be your width um, B. Okay. So if you have, you might have seen army tank. There will be track, or you might have seen track type tractor. If you search on Google track type tractor, you can find lot of John Deere tractors, high RSP tractors, which will have track on it. Okay. So for track type tractor, your area will be multiplication of B into L. So if you calculate this pressure P. Which is nothing but force per unit area, and W by A. This A will be B into L. You don't need to remember this, but you just understand the concept because it is rectangular footprint. We are calculating area as B into L. But if you take pneumatic tire, the footprint is elliptical. <coughs> so now this area will be less than rectangle rectangular area. So here it is. Usually it is 78 percent of rectangular area. So here if it is your rectangular area is B L, then your elliptical area will be. 78 percent of BL means 0.78 BL. Okay, so in in case of pneumatic tire, your footprint will be elliptical. In case of a uh, track, your footprint will be rectangular. In case of rectangular, your your area will be B into L. In case of elliptical, your area will be 78 0.78 into BL or 78 percent of BL. Okay, so just remember these two concepts, these two differences. <coughs> Now moving forward. I have explained to you. So these two are uh, extremely important uh, conditions. I have explained to you how, uh, that what is traction and traction force, but how to measure it? Okay. So this AC plus W ten phi is being measured with the help of this shear plate apparatus uh, instrument. In this, there will be one plate which will have these kind of lugs, and you are giving some amount of load W on this. You are basically pushing this. Okay. In this. Apparatus, and then you have to plot. You have to take some iterations. For W1 load, there will be some amount of F1 uh, force. This is similarly for W2, W3, and other values also you have to take. Then this you have you have to plot on x-axis. You keep normal forces. On y-axis, you have to keep maximum ruling force. Okay, so this intercept will give you AC. And this angle will give you angle of internal friction. <coughs> so you know the equation of a straight line, y equals to m x plus c. So that c is nothing but this intercept a c. So this is also corresponding to that straight line equation. 
uh, y equals to mx plus c corresponding with that we we got here f equals to ac plus w dm phi but it is not so simple uh, it is coming with the help of um, this mohr coulomb's failure criteria this is a very important concept which you might have read in your strength of material book and, the, and as well as soil science book <coughs> okay so if you not read about this and if you want more clarity go and read about mohr coulomb's failure criteria so basically we are plotting Shear stress versus normal stress over here, and you have different different Mohr circle with respect to different load and different force. You plot all these half circles, and <coughs> then you draw a line uh, which will be tangent on all these half circles. That line will be nothing but the line of AC plus W tan phi. Okay, and this is how angle of internal friction is coming. So this is how this traction. Measurement is being done experimentally. So basically, it is an experimented uh, concept which you cannot repeat in the field. This you have to do for different soil condition and different uh, load condition in lab. Okay, so this is how tractive force, maximum tractive force, is being measured. Now, as I, as I have told you, there is that there are two things here in this traction. One is AC and one is W tan phi. So for AC, <coughs> this A is tire footprint area. So this area will depend on your tire inflation pressure also. So here, as for example, this top one is 10 psi inflation pressure, below one is 6 psi inflation pressure. So you can see it clearly that uh, this below one is higher length and higher width. So it will give you more tire footprint area, whereas less inflation pressure will have less tire footprint area. <coughs> At the same time, you can see that. Uh, Inside the tire, the inflation pressure is less, and once you go near to the tire surface, your pressure this is 15, 20, 25 inflation pressure. So, here it is higher. Why it is higher is because of higher stiffness of tire material. Okay, so if you are going into how what is the significance of this? If you are going into the soil, then you can reduce your inflation pressure and you can get higher, higher uh, footprint, so you can get higher traction. Okay, but if you are uh, in road on the road, then you don't need higher traction at that time. You can deflate your tire so that your tire wear will reduce. Okay, so this is how you can increase your tire inflation pressure and you can get higher traction. Now, for second concept, this W tan phi, how it is coming. <coughs> so, this is how you can visualize it. This is a slab on the soil surface. This is W force is coming, and this F you are pushing it. So, if you take a cross section. This cross section will be triangular cross section. Okay, so near the point where you are pulling this slab, the maximum soil will accumulate. So here, this size of triangle will increase, and then it will start decreasing till the end, so it will be zero. So this angle will be your angle of internal friction, phi. Okay, so this is how you can visualize this phi thing. <coughs> I hope so. There are two things, which is first one is A, second one is W. Now, if you see for frictional soil and if you see for cohesive soil, cohesive soil means clay soil, which will have very less soil, uh, soil size is very less, soil particle size, whereas in sand, particle size is high. So, if you go to Rajasthan soil, which is sandy soil, where cohesive is negligible. So, in that case, this W will be of prime importance. More load you put, more traction you will get. But in case of clay soil, like in Maharashtra soil, uh, this contact area will be of prime importance. Higher the size of tire or track, more traction you will get. Okay, so you can uh, see the differences here. <coughs> Moving forward, this is the great 1994 question. Just pause the video and try to solve this question. So here they are asking uh, about they have given uh, they have given the uh, size of track, then angle of internal friction and soil cohesion. Okay, so how to solve it? First, it is a track, so area will be B into L. Then, second step is maximum traction force developed by one track. Okay, so <coughs> for one track, weight will be supported by both the track. So here we have to take half of that weight. So that's that is the important thing here. So we have taken W by two for one track. Okay, so this is the maximum traction force developed by one track. Now for two track, I mean for uh, complete tractor, it will be two F. The answer will be 35.265. Okay, so this B is the right answer. 
थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग गाइज